forever. Dog. Hello, Forever Dog listeners. I'm Allison Raskin. And I'm Gabby Dunn. And we host the podcast Just Between Us, which is available right here, right now on Forever Dog. Just Between Us is a variety show that features listener questions, in-depth interviews, and topical topics. We also play a game show called Hypotheticals. I could try to explain it to you, but the rules keep changing. I make the rules. And I always lose. We're also joined each week by incredible guests, including disability activist Alice Wong, Planned Parenthood's Alexis McGill-Johnson, best-selling author and therapist Lori Gottlieb, and primatologist Kate Gilmore. New episodes of Just Between Us drop every Wednesday. So while you're listening to this podcast, search for Just Between Us with Allison Raskin and Gabby Dunn. Hit that subscribe button and check us out. Please. Please. (laughs) Just Between Us. This may come as a surprise, but my family is ready to get out of the house. So I did a search on the Verbo app. They've got vacation homes anywhere your family wants to go. We found the perfect beach house that was just a drive away. It has an outdoor kitchen, a pool, and a game room for the kids, so we can really unwind and relax. Check out the Verbo app for whatever kind of vacation your family needs. That's Verbo, V-R-B-O dot com. Start the show. Hey Tom, let's start the show. Julie. Yes. That is the nicest song I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> oh, it's the only song I've ever heard. You should check out music. You're gonna love it. Nah. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Double Threat. That's right. My name is Tom. My name is Julie, and we're the hosts of your favorite show. And we have an exciting, uh, uh, adventurous like that. We're going into the, into the 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 unknown. We go on today. to the bush adventure. We're going to the bush. How do you say bush in an Australian accent? Bush. bush. It's all vowels. How do you do it? How do oh, you do we're it? going to the bush. <laughs> that Australian accent. You what? You love it? It's erotic to you. It's very erotic to me. <laughs> The it's it, the languages I find the most erotic are German, a thick German accent, mm-hmm. uh, Australian accent. Hello, hey Tom, hi, hey. and then like a like a Baltimore accent. Oh, like down here. Yeah. Um, and also uh, a British person pretending to be American accent. Um, hello, waiter. I'd <laughs> like to order. We like pineapple. Look here, buddy. <laughs> just, that's my we're, favorite we're thing. Sick, we're sick of waiting around. I really don't want to do this, pal. That's right. And then they, they kind of mess up. So they're like, that's right. Particularly. Yeah. They go, yeah, you hear the softened thing because it's. You're like, extraordinary. They go, because they usually say Extraordinary. So they go extraordinary. Yeah, too many hard R's. Mm-hmm. Um, I love asking British actors and comedians to do their American accent, and they yeah. always do a Texas act. They always oh, they do either hey. they do a, hey either y'all. they do the flattest. Yes, it's either the flattest Midwestern accent or just a straight up hey, like you just did. How y'all doing today? Yeah. Um. Josh Gad has just started doing scenes on his, I forget if it was his Twitter or Instagram, but he did a scene from Fiddler on Bad the Roof. Lieutenant. <laughs> Gad Lieutenant. Um, oh, hold on a second. Show's done. We just reached the finish line. This is, we could just talk about just this now. Gad Lieutenant. Well, you know what? Let's, listeners... Write a script for Gad Lieutenant. <laughs> we will do it. We'll get him on 
our no, no, we will not get show. no. We'll cast it with like literally. There, we'll get Bobby Moynihan. We'll get someone who he's taken apart from, mm-hmm. like comedy in the comedy world, who is like deserved that role. What do, should we get? That other guy, Gad. You know that 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 French who? comedian, God, God, God. No, I don't want any. No, I don't believe in God. <laughs> there is no Gad. I don't believe in what is that Madonna song at the beginning? She goes, I no longer believe in Gad because God does not believe in me. It's like a, yeah. it's like Elwood Blues. Chicago, yeah. Gad is a concept by which we measure our pain. Say it again. Dear God, hope you got the letter <laughs> end. I pray you can make it better down here. <laughs> I may not always love you. But when there are stars, Dad of- <laughs> only knows. Um, Brett, what have you what have you got for us? Oh man, we got a great show coming up today. We've got um, we better. We've got. <laughs> we are uh, going to be joined by the very funny Keisha Zoller a little bit later on, um, and uh, uh, one of the stars of a uh, Astronomy Club on on Netflix, and uh, just an all around super funny person. Keisha Zoller will be joining us. Uh, and then uh, we've got uh, in the latter half of the show, we've got a a, a tattoo extravaganza. Um, I think uh, last week this all started because last week you had uh, suggested that uh, if any listeners wanted to get a double threat tattoo, uh, that that you would design one for them. And we got a couple a couple willing participants there, so we're going to have them on, and you're going to design a tattoo that they are actually going to get. Uh, tattooed onto their bodies. Uh, so we'll have those guys coming up. We also have a uh, tattoo artist, a very talented tattoo artist, Ella Sklaw from Brooklyn, joining us to chat about uh, the work that she... And by the way, I'm not going to mention this to her, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but she did Ella M. Hoff's tattoos. Wow. And Ella M. Hoff is the coolest ever. Did you watch the inauguration, Tom? Um, I watched. Or, I watched from, a good from your chunk cell, of it. from your cell after storming the Capitol. Or were you too mad, Julie? This is the thing I didn't want to tell anybody. <laughs> I'm still in the Capitol. <laughs> I've been in this closet for almost three weeks. Um, they have these old wafer cookies I've been eating, and them running out, and I'm hiding in Cory Booker's office in the closet in Cory he's Booker's gonna be office. So mad. He hears his me every time I'm like munching, and then I hear him like a like, munching. What's that? I hear him go like, "What is that?" Uh, just no one here but us chickens. Yeah, and then he he goes, "Oh, okay." Then he goes, "Okay," and then I say, uh, "Rosario Dawson on line two. And goes, then he <laughs> you said like Yosemite Sam. Yeah. No, I'm I'm out of the Capitol. They're never going to catch me. No, I know. Because I, wait, Why? I'm literally doing what all the other people did. Which is? I was there and we stormed it and it was awesome and we fought for freedom. Please don't. I was duped. You use the word, they all use the word storm when they uh-huh. bragged online. Yeah. And then yeah. suddenly they're like, I was just going along with the thing. We stormed the Capitol. We took it. It's ours. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> this is like the worst ever ventriloquist act where the guy, the guy with the dummy is like, we stormed the Capitol. We were scared. <laughs> yeah, that's the perfect. Yeah, that'd be a good act. We should get that. Uh, I don't know if that act works in Biden's America. Is Trump, is Trump good for comedy? Jenny Garofalo, <laughs> Jiminy Glick asking if Trump is good for comedy. <laughs> was Trump good for comedy? Why do you think that he was? <laughs> because I saw Biden and I was very low when I. I don't understand why Jill has not cut the back of his hair at this point. Like, while he's sleeping, maybe we could mm-hmm. get us like a secret security guy to just like, all I want is to see Biden turn and not have that like little inch of fringe that's like, doesn't cling to his, the base of his skull. I mean, it looks like the Crypt Keeper. 
I kind of yeah. I kind of like it. Can I come on this? Can I argue in favor of it? What do you What do you like about well, it? Well, because I think it gives him a little edge, you know, because he's very uh, what would you say, avuncular, very uncle like. He comes across as this very sweet. I think you're, I think you're looking for the guy. word unc- uncular. <laughs> uncular, I think is the word. <laughs> yeah, sorry, he's very uncular, um, uh-huh. very sweet. Uh, and then they cut to that side angle, and you're like, oh, he's got a little. Got something, got a little edge yeah. going on back there. Party in the back. I wouldn't say party in the back. I'd say maybe like reception in the back. No, that's a party. If we are going to keep the length, can't we just put some product in it so it just smushes up again? It's the it's the distance between the flesh of the man and the hair of the man that drives me insane. And by insane, I mean horny. That's my <laughs> voice that I you know, use when I'm aroused. You know, I'm hoping he goes the other way, that he grows it out a little bit more and there's a little little mini ponytail. Or a braid. You like a man with a with a single braid in the back? I think he could do a braid, he could do a little get a little ponytail, rubber band. Do you know why he he hasn't cut that yet? Corn pop uh told him not to. <laughs> Where is corn, corn pop. pop in the cabinet? If this was the 80s or 90s, we could sell a movie because they don't Mm -hmm. make movies like this anymore. Yeah. Where Corn Pop comes to the White House now. Oh, yes. Sinbad. Two words. Sinbad. (laughs) Suddenly, yeah. Just suddenly hear like. Like house sitter. As your president, I'll do this. And then you just like. House guest. Then vroom, vroom. A motorcycle pulls up. ba na 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 I'm here to be bad. Yeah. Bad. Sin bad to the bone. Sin bad rules. I love yes. him. I think he had a health. He has a health issue currently, and we're we're pulling for you, Sin bad. House guest is the name of it. Is that the, the name of the, the Sin bad? The movie? Phil Hartman. Phil movie? Hartman. Yeah. Yeah. The one where that Sin bad's head is popping out of the mailbox. Is that the poster for house guests? What a wonderful day if you go and check the mail. That'd be like the best case scenario if you open your mailbox and it's in beds. And by the way, attached to his bot, like living head. Yes. Yeah. Be like the world's greatest cuckoo clock. Sinbad pops out. Natural redhead, I believe. What is this? House guest? Yes. I like the dog in that poster. Yeah. Because it seems like the dog may have been a graphic design afterthought. I think they took this picture for real. I think they got a mailbox, asked Sinbad to climb in, put his right hand on the edge of it, look at the camera. Phil Hartman will lift the lid down. His four family members. Yeah, there's like, he lives with four young wives. It's big love. And then this dog is looking up at Sinbad just like, you and me, we're gonna we're gonna have a good time together, It'd be buddy. Be great if there was like a ten minute sequence in the middle of this where Sinbad and the dog are just singing "Don't Stop Me Now." Yeah, that'd be a, like a little break. That'd be awesome. So, and but it was "Don't Stop Us Now." It'd be us. And then the dog is like, "Don't pet me now." And he's I'm like, going. "We're having such a good time." The dog goes, "So give me a ball." Yeah, so give me a bone. <laughs> No, a ball Give me because a ball. it's usually yeah, you're a right. call. No, you're right. You're you're right. Right. Go, go now, throw me a ball. And throw me a ball because don't, don't stop pet me, me now. Because he doesn't want to be pet. Oh, he doesn't want to be pet. Right. Playing. He wants to be played with. Right. Yeah. Like, don't pet me now. I'm not in relaxed pet mode. I'm in run around to go nuts mode. What would it be instead of Mr. Fahrenheit? That's why they call uh, me Mr. Pedialyte? <laughs> I have diarrhea. <laughs> that song would be a lot different if he called uh, himself Mr. Pedialyte. I've got a tummy ache. That's why they call me Mr. Pedialyte. Yeah. Tonight, I'm going to have myself such a bad time. I've got diarrhea. There we go. There we go. I was worried you had referred to Frank Zappa in 10 minutes, and now I'm getting like the, the roundabout way. No, that was not a Frank. That was a Queen reference. I'm that just was your the- favorite song of his. Of Frank do Zappa? Do it. Just do Frank Zappa singing I've Got Diarrhea. His would be just like, tonight <laughs> I'm going to have myself. And it's also triple tracked also. You have to realize like 
the vocals you mean are all his triple vocals? Track. You think that's because yeah. he was not a great singer? Yeah, I think he just could have a fuller voice then. By you think the cigarettes got in the way. I just think his 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 kind of average voice got in the way. He just didn't have like a amazing voice. That's why he worked with singers. Do you know that his uh, mustache was just two cigarettes <laughs> facing out? The way that if you were going to be funny, which I've been, by the way, I've been funny in the past. I've been on dates uh, where you I take. Think? I got two green beans and I go, look at me. I've got a mustache. <laughs> but sometimes I take a, a green bean. I pretend I'm smoking. Sure. No, it's your it's your it's your green bean chunk. I go, hey, where are you going? Did he call you back? Not this time. Well, maybe next time. Did you do your green yeah, bean Yeah, you chunk? want my autograph? And you do pretend nah. you sign an autograph with you the go, green bean. Guess the secret word. Go, what is, I'm 34. So, well, that's not it. That's not the secret word. I like when you talk into the green bean like it's a miniature phone. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> it's for you. And he goes, oh, yeah. And then he goes, I got to take this. And he leaves the restaurant. Yeah. I'm like, I'll yeah, be back. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. I got to take this. You oh. never see him again. And I, lo- and I was like I, like, I call my friend on my real phone. And I'm like, I think this one's going to work out because he's playing along with the bit. Yeah. He likes the green beans. I'm unlucky in love. What's your favorite thing to do with food to be funny with it? Eat it super fast when no <laughs> one's looking. <laughs> in private, eat more of it than I should. Is that funny? <laughs> it's, I mean, look, whatever it gets you to, I mean, I think you're funny. So if that's your, that's how you get to where you're going to go, I'm all for mm-hmm. get, Keep your, you know what, Forever Dog, keep those deliveries coming. Now, people got to realize Forever Dog, they got a lot of shows. Uh-huh. Like what? What? Ray, race Chasers is one, uh-huh. right, Brett? Yep. That's right. Yeah, yep. Race Chaser. Yep. Oh, I'm Treks, gonna leave. I'm Treks gonna in leave. the city. This, you don't need me because now Brett's going to take it. Race Chaser just nominated for its uh, third Queerty in three years for Best Podcast. Pretty exciting. I was kind of I was kind of hurt when I saw the podcast awards that went down this past week. Why? And it was like Office Ladies was like Best Comedy Show. I was like. What Tom? Don't give us don't give a second thought to those awards. That is like a like a what com- are those a company, awards? It's like a company Christmas party where they give out awards to their employees. The the fix was in on those iHeart awards. I tell you what. Oh, they're iHeart Radio awards. Yeah, it's iHeart. They're a podcast network, and they're giving out awards. They nominate a bunch of their own shows. They nominate some some of their buddies, and then uh, they Baldwin, pretend like it's Baldwin. Uh, uh, Baldwin, Baldwin was no, nowhere to be found on that. He's uh, I think too new to the iHeart Club to be to be included in that, but. Look out for him next year. When is Forever Dog going to do their in-house award show? Well, we might have to now. I guess that's the way things are going. Uh, the the doggies! Dog. The doggies! Yeah, the doggies. And the winner of best podcasting duo comedy is Get Up Here, you SOBs. OB! Julie Klausner, Tom yeah. Shockley. And then you could do the uh, the other thing that Jack Nicholson did when he won that one time, and he uh, he said, and and for my fellow nominees, and they turned around and 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 like kind of mooned everybody. You remember that? I think it was at the Golden Globes. What? Yeah, I think it was he, he, he won. mooned them with his bare ass. Well, he had like a long jacket, no, and he sort of flipped up the jacket oh and and stuck God. his butt out at everybody. I think it was at the Golden Globes. Uh, he won for as good as it gets, and he uh, uh, instead Nancy of being Myers is like, mm-hmm. I have an idea. I still think the coolest Jack Nicholson photo ever is the one of him sitting courtside at a Lakers game when he clearly spilled like chili on his pants. <laughs> I don't know that the, one. Can I see that oh, one? Oh, get ready. Oh, my yeah. goodness. You get ready. Anybody out there you want to see a, a picture, look for Jack Nicholson after he spilled then, some food on his pants. And then Photoshop Bernie next to him. Hey, can I ask you a question? Did you know Everyone in the world could use Photoshop this well with the Bernie thing. I was like, wow, you know what? I didn't know literally everyone in the world was so good at Photoshop. And if that's the case, why don't I look thinner in the photos you put up? I saw. Dicks? 
I was like, all right, I'm sick of this Bernie stuff. And it's suddenly, oh, there he is on the steps of the Discord house, the minor threat cover. I like that. <laughs> and then two hours later, no more Bernie stuff. Oh, he's on the roof of Let It Be with the replacements. I like that. <laughs> Enough with. You know what they should Bernie. do, man? Put him in the wheelchair like Hector Salamanca, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is my stoner who likes breaking bad character yeah wait what's going on in this picture who's he sitting next to is that pete townsend on the left dressed up like no, a blind dressed up like a blind guy who sells pencils in an 80s movie that's lou adler okay manager of cheech and chunk directed up in smoke um and so is there chili underneath his feet did he spill chili on his feet Look at the bowl, Julie. It looks like he brought a Tupperware. Looks like a from Tupperware. Home. Could you zoom in, Brett? I'm gonna bring my goddamn chili and a goddamn Tupperware <laughs> to the <laughs> goddamn Lakers game. And it's on his pants. It's on his like green corduroys. And he's got a little plastic spoon in his mouth and his hand. Look at the plastic spoon. He rules. <laughs> I got my chili. At the Laker game. Why did he do that? Was he trying to psych out the other team? Was he trying to make them slip or something? <laughs> that would be the greatest thing I've ever heard. If suddenly he's like, Lakers got to win this one. I'm bringing I, the I, chili. I, I, I got a trick up my sleeve. Your old pal Jack <laughs> isn't done yet. Yeah, it's a competitive game. It was the Lakers and the Pacers. And Jack was just like. I'm getting some chili out by the three point line. Oh my gosh. They're going to be afraid to come off of picks well, going too should... fast. They're going to slip in my chili. That's what we'll do for the next uh, Halloween episode where we have chili and candy. We'll get um, God Jack willing, Nicholson Jack will on the show. will still be among us. Yes. <laughs> we'll get... Whatever. We've gotten cra crazier notions. Jack, we know you um, have never done a podcast. Yeah, but he's never done a TV show. That's his whole thing. He's, he's like, never... I won't go on TV because it, it yeah. cheapens me. But a podcast is a horse yeah. of a different color. All I can see is that chili on those green corduroy <laughs> slacks. <laughs> can you imagine getting the chili out of the grooves of those cords? Oh, gross. Lara Flynn boils at home with like one of those um, chore boy sponges. Mm -hmm. I think she'd <laughs> have to go get like a cap. From a Bic pen. I think what she does is she was like, clean them. And she just bought a new pair. Yeah, she just, or she just from gave them back the same pair. She didn't even touch them at all. She's like, yeah, they're clean. They're good to go. And they like are caked with chili on them. I think there's just a whole closet. Like from, they're probably from Land's End. Where's my goddamn chili pants? <laughs> I'm going to throw up just thinking about. <laughs> How gross those corduroy grooves must be. I'm getting a very tactile revulsion. Mm -hmm. like I lately, my pants and chili, <laughs> baby. Who's that sitting courtside? Yeah. Cord, cord side. Cord, cord corduroyed. I'm sitting cord side tonight. Get my chili. I'm pushing for. Uh, double threat uh, Jack Chili tattoos. Yeah. A thing that I didn't think about until four minutes ago. Now I'm going to push for someone to get it on their body for the remainder of their life. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? In 2020, I'm sure there were no shortage of answers to those questions for you uh, and for me and for everyone. And so in 2021, if you're looking to take control of your mental health and if you're interested in giving therapy a try, uh, maybe you've never tried therapy before or maybe you're looking to get back into it, uh, there are many options out there for you. And one of the most convenient and affordable of those options is BetterHelp. 
BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start right away uh, communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. There is a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. And the service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. And plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. And if it's something that you want to try out, you can go to betterhelp.com slash Tom and Julie. That's better H-E-L-P slash Tom and Julie and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And we've got a special offer for Double Threat listeners. You can get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp at betterhelp.com slash Tom and Julie. That's betterhelp.com slash Tom and Julie. Hey there, Double Threat listeners. If you're looking for a new podcast to add to your queue, we recommend The Vanished from Wondery. Every week on The Vanished, host Marissa Jones takes you beyond the headlines and explores a different missing persons case. Right now, you can listen to the latest episode all about the story of Rosemary Rodriguez. In October 2019, Rosemary went to dinner with her boyfriend and her mother. On the way home, they dropped Rosemary's mother off and headed to her boyfriend's home. According to him, Rosemary left his house after a brief argument. Two days later, a colleague called Rosemary's family to tell them that she hadn't been to work, something very out of character for Rosemary. Rosemary's family immediately called the police to report her missing. More than a year has passed since Rosemary's daughters last saw their mom, and every day seems to bring more and more dread that something awful has happened. Listen to the story of Rosemary Rodriguez from The Vanished on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or you can listen ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. Hey, Tom, do we have a guest? Julie, do we have a guest? We We have have the guest. The guest. We've got uh, Keisha Zoller joining us now, one of the creators and stars of Astronomy Club on Netflix and a very funny comedian uh, who you can follow on Twitter at Keisha Z. And today is a show about art, about decisions, about permanence. We're making so many, so many, so many huge moves today. Today, we're just two listeners have decided to get double threat tattoos, and we will guide them through this yes, decision. With, with the help of our guest, Keisha Zoller. Hi, Keisha. Hi, Julie. Are you in your new? You're not in your kitchen because you don't no. have those beautiful blue cabinets behind you. No, I am trapped in a, a long stay hotel oh, because my home is not quite ready. So. Mm. Is there an ice machine in the hallway? Um, not on this floor, but if I go to the second floor, there is one. All ice, all ice machines are haunted. A I M A H. All ice machines are haunted. All ice machines. We got there. Uh, yeah, this. <laughs> yeah, we did. You know, yeah. ice machines are are a fluke of nature. They feel incredibly unnatural if they're like for the scale of what they mm-hmm. are. Yeah. Do you, do you, Keisha, it's nice to meet you. I'm Tom. How are you? Uh, it's great to meet you. How are you? I'm good. Do you, first of all, you put the plastic bag in the ice bucket, right? You oh, of the, course. The pl- plastic lining. And do you often feel that you hit that ice thing and it comes out too strong and the bag just gets pulled right in? I, I think it's not the, like, it's hard. The plastic isn't thick enough. Uh, it is mm-hmm. not. You wouldn't even use it as a garbage can liner for a bathroom. Tiny little garbage can. No, I it's it's basically a step down from saran wrap in terms of like plastics. And I, I think you need protection for your ice. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you're taking a big water risk that I don't think is worth it. Yeah, because who knows really what's inside that giant thing? There could be a dead body in there. Um, parts of a dead body. Or parts of a dead body. Is that better or worse? Worse I mean, because of the exposure of the, you know what I mean? Like the surface area. 
not the surface area. What am I trying to say? Uh, the... Yeah, I, I don't know what you're talking You don't to know. Say. It's fine. The the if the human body is intact, right? There's yeah. skin everywhere. More or less. You chop up a body, there's more of those like mad magazine parts. Bone sticking out, blood. Brett's nodding. Yeah, I, I was just thinking I get what you're saying. those ice buckets are perfect for like black market organs like you know in yeah. every movie yes. you've seen yes. you're like yes that's where you put the kidneys until yeah. you get the cooler like just in case yeah. it's off season and you can't find a cooler at a walmart <laughs> or a target or wherever you buy coolers i thought you meant off season for kidneys oh uh, well there's never a wrong season for no kid- there's not no we were just talking about uh th- basically i'll just cut to the chase I wanted to show Julie and Brett a picture of Jack Nicholson spilled chili on his pants at a Lakers game a long a while ago. You ever seen this ago. picture? No, it's like that sounds like the drunk Liam Neeson pissing himself photos, which I just What? I don't know about that one. There's so many and maybe he's drunk allegedly. I'm going to live in the allegedly, but he's like either really sweaty balls or he pisses himself all the time. I was going to say oh is it, have goodness. we like is it definitely piss? Um, my husband showed them to me and I was like, I, I understand that shine, uh, that effervescence of, of drunkness. And <laughs> what I do not understand is the wet pants. Like it is clearly like sweaty balls or he pisses. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh yeah. no. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me that you didn't. What you- is so that middle one. Up? On that middle one, there's that that would be if he was if that's sweat in that middle one, he would no longer be with us. There'd be the, the middle one a, is definitely pissed because if you look at his face, it's the only one where he looks like really ashamed. Well, and every other one, it, it feels like he's accepting this is who I am, right? Like in the blazer where he's leaning against a wall, he's like, Yep, I pissed my pants. I'm also a big star, so... Uh, Here's how this is going to go. I'm telling you, <laughs> I've got a certain skill set. I can hear wet myself. <laughs> taken Ta- four taken, was not so good. Taken, taken to the bathroom too late. <laughs> he he take, Taken four, he just meant he'd taken a leak in his own pants. <laughs> I, I'm so happy I could share this with you because... Uh, Andrew, my husband, shared it with me, and I've just been like, this is rotting my brain. I can't live with this. So it's like it follows. You just need to dump it on someone else, and then it's not your problem anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm fine. I get to go to sleep tonight. Yes. Not, not keep- in a wet pillow being like, Liam Neeson pee. Uh, yeah. You're just like, look, it's your problem now. Just keep moving. <laughs> just try not to think about it when you close your eyes. And give That's it to not, someone yeah. else, and then it won't be your problem anymore. Exactly. That is not sweat. That could not possibly be sweat. As I'm looking, maybe the one on the left, but no. Yeah, you look at it, and you're like, maybe. And then, like, mm-hmm. it's always the mechanics of, like, jiggling before you put it away. Maybe that's it. <laughs> but even that feels like couldn't explain all these picks. And there's more. There are more picks. What? Than- yes. So if you want to just go down a rabbit hole of something, you're just like, I I don't want to see this. There's one picture of him like embracing a fan and the fan is like, "Uh." (laughs) it's an amazing picture because the fan clearly is like Liam Neeson. He pissed himself. (laughs) And you can see the stages of like her processing in a, in a picture. And it's like amazing. Um, and I feel like I'm that person. I think she, she speaks. Yeah. To she's me. Yeah. She is all of us, uh, processing that Liam Neeson, like is real chill pissing himself. Life in 2021, <laughs> you're either the fan excitedly hugging your favorite celebrity only to realize that they weed themselves or you're the celebrity who weed themselves and then had a fan come up to you and excitedly take a picture. With it's you. like the traditional definition of the schlemiel versus the schlemazel. Keisha as a chosen person 
en route or are you conf- are you officially I I you're I'm, you're an MO you're an MOT. Yeah, I I um am looking for a good synagogue out in LA. You're Jewish. You're Jewish. You're Jewish. You're Jewish. Okay, thank you. I've 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 welcome <laughs> I've welcome I've had Shabbat I've had more Shabbats with you than I've had with 90% of the uh Klausers. Um but what I was going to say is um the Shlemiel is the one who spills the soup and the Shlemazel is the one who always gets soup spilled on him. And those are the only two types of Jews there are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's also International Soup Month or National Soup Month. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Julie just lost it. I think I broke Julie. Yeah, you did it. I made soup come out of her. That was the fine. The, the, this the is how I learned that broke the Julie's back. Meanwhile, it's like almost the end. And like, I haven't gotten you anything. Um, You've gotten me soup before. And I, I can't tell you as a soup lover how much yeah. that meant to me. Soup um, is the, the, the kindest gift in a way. What's your favorite? Oh, that's everybody's favorite kind of soup. Should we just cancel the show, Brett, where we were going to do? It would be like, tattoos are too hard. Let's talk about soup. Because it's apparently it's International Soup Month. Yeah. I'd say this is, first of all, this is a black eye for Forever Dog and Brett in particular for not keeping the hosts of the show uh, uh, up to speed on Soup Month. Yeah, I really dropped the ball on that one. I apologize, guys. Stop sounding sarcastic and start sounding like you're repentant. Do you feel like on Seinfeld it would be uh, a soup proud boy instead of a soup Nazi now? <laughs> would be like, like this place has the best soup in Manhattan. Oh, the owner's a real soup proud boy. I feel like proud boys couldn't make good soup. I think. No. I feel like that's my pushback. Proud boys. The idea of proud boys making soup. I. I couldn't eat it. What's in it? Probably something disgusting. Yeah, piss and fago. Soup will not replace us. <laughs> now the now the bug. What is it? The other ones, the boogaloos. No, oh, they. Those are supos. Supos all the way. <laughs> yeah, and they, and they do a beautiful paella. I'm glad Ringo Starr took a stand against them and said, "Back off, boogaloo." Back in <laughs> 1970. 58 years before any of this happened. My favorite soup is anything pureed that isn't dairy. Okay. Ooh. Like a, like a, like so a pureed. Tomato. Oh, I love tomato. I, even though I don't like actual like broccoli because it's just too unwieldy. It's just like, I don't know how to fit my mouth around. It's just, I don't know. My attitude, my, my relationship with broccoli is a little bit complicated, but I love like a, a pureed broccoli soup. Okay. How about like a borscht? Do you like do you like beet? I like a borscht. Okay. I like I like beets. Okay. Um, but I would really like like a like a curried butternut squash. I would really like. Mm, that's good. Um, or like a tomato. Yeah. That that's my that's my pick mm-hmm. to click. Those are all respectable soups. I am someone who loves ramen and a, oh, a variety God, of yes. ramen. Yes. Um. And I like ramen because it's very versatile and you can be very conscious of like how people eat and like if they have allergies or sensitivities, it's easy to make vegan. Um, I love ramen. I love uh, matzo ball soup. I love yes, obviously. Uh, tomato soup. Like tomato soup, I have a weird love affair because it's also like one of my like most traumatic memories of having like chicken pox. I like had it um, and it's about to get uh, real dark. So you might want to censor this, Brett. Don't censor it. Um, (laughs) I used to projectile vomit as a kid. And so I I ate a bunch of tomato soup (laughs) and painted the powder room walls of my parents' home when I was uh, 12. And so you painted the roses red. Painted painted all the roses. I mean, it was more like a green floral wallpaper, (gasps) but I painted it. Uh, Oh my God. And and that is like a memory that is stained. And I was like, yet I still eat tomato soup. (laughs) It's vile. 
like, and I like one of those deep sense memories of like, I smell it. I see mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Bill will eat tomato soup. But it soup. doesn't matter. Uh, that's a testament to the greatness of tomato soup, if anything. I agree. Tom, it's, your, it's your turn, Tom. I like, so I like, I do like a, like a, like a, a hearty soup, uh, like a butter, not like a squash based, uh, soup i also like melty melty ice cream it's and then that <laughs> soup does that count as soup sure. um yeah i'll put it in the soup category because it's like a sweet soup yeah thank you brett oh it's an italian wedding for me all the way uh big, big fan of italian <laughs> wedding soup some, a little bit of pa- a pasta in there yeah and right? i because my only issue i love meatballs but my only issue with meatballs is, is sometimes they're a little too big and so the um uh, Getting those mini meatballs in there is really just always, I always look forward to that. I was going to say, I don't know if I've ever had Italian wedding soup. Like, oh, you're in for a treat. Okay. A it's a meal. Yeah. It's a meal. It's not a soup. It's like a, um, I think it's probably closer to a stew. Uh, if- the base is very thin though. That's, that's the thing is it counterbalances all the kind of heaviness of the meatball stuff. That's a very thin broth. It's a broth. Yeah. Um, here's what I like about the idea of Brett eating mini meatballs it's the closest you can come as a human to eating dog food, like a bowl of kibble. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. It is kind of human dog food, Italian wedding soup. It has like a, yeah, like mini meat, like kind of, it's got a little bit of everything. It's got kind of a grain in there as well. It's uh, just like an Italian wedding. That'd be a good episode of Seinfeld. I could picture Kramer eating at a place where it was a, a dog restaurant and he liked it. And he'd be like, Jerry, I'm telling you, it's good food for it's people food. It's not people food, Kramer. It's dog food. Try it, Jerry. <laughs> and then the soup proud boy gets mad and then <laughs> Okay, now I'm back. You lost me. Stomps <laughs> all around yeah. the place. So Keisha, we're gonna chat today about tattoos. And uh Tom and I don't have any tattoos. Do you have any tattoos? Me? No. Yeah, no. I, oh my I, god. <laughs> you I, I'm not against them and I want one okay. but yeah. i also am like oh that sounds so hard and right. it sounds painful and time consuming and expensive and more and more than anything else permanent it, it's also the thing of like well we're all racing towards the grave what part of my body is going to be so pristine <laughs> in right. 40 years that you're like oh that's still a bop yeah because um, <laughs> my husband has a tattoo and we started dating and then like a month and a half into dating, he got a tattoo and I was like, Oh, Oh, okay. So and this he, is who you are. Yeah. He uh, lied to me essentially, but we're, we're going through it. Um, you're like, you're like every, so every month and a half, this is going to yeah. be a thing. Uh, Did he but stop like, it? He stopped at one tattoo. He stopped at one tattoo. Uh, he needs to get it touched up, but he, and I talked about, he forgets about it because it's on his calf. And so, like, when it's not shorts weather, he'll be like, oh, yeah, I have, I forget I have a tattoo because it's only around mm-hmm. his calf. And I forget he has a tattoo quite often as well. When you say around his calf, is it like Pamela Anderson's barbed wire tattoo um, on the upper arm? You know it. And it goes all the way up his thigh. No, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, his, his tattoo uh, says tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Uh, uh, from Shakespeare, yeah, the Bard. What a nerd! He got a. Well, nerd I was also tattoo. gonna say, like a month and a half, a month and a half in, you're like telling your friends, you're like, I think this guy's like really great. Like, I, I we're still figuring out who we are. We're getting to know each other. It's like, all right, I'm gonna see him tomorrow. He comes in with like saran wrap on his calf. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, hey, uh. a month and a half in. Did you feel like? you were within the earliest portion of this is something to maybe talk about with someone else before you do it? Oh, no. Uh, to Like, I, I said dating, to be polite. What it really was was hooking up. <laughs> okay. Uh, my husband and I were hooking up, I would say, the first few months. It was like, ah, keep it cash. We're hooking up. Every day we spend together, I love you. Never leave me. Marry me me no marry me marry me marry me uh that's the trajectory of our relationship so 
you know, when you're hooking up with someone, it's both a surprise and you're like, ah, I'll hold my opinions. <laughs> no, well, 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 then what is a tattoo he could have gotten that would have made you think twice? Like if it was like a Chuck, a Chuck Palahniuk quote, like a quote from a Chuck Palahniuk book or something. Well, I think it, it would have to be like the most intense person I ever met who had like a neck tattoo, but it was a very specific neck tattoo. Um, I met someone uh, dressed outside of Harvard Square uh, back in my early 20s who had a neck tattoo of um, one of, oh, what, what were they called? Oh, Tiki Wiki, like, oh. Teletubbies. Tiki? He had the Teletubby. Uh, he, <laughs> he told me, and I'm quoting, quoting Matrix, he had the gay one with the penis. <laughs> That was ejaculating mm -hmm. like into his mouth. No, it did not. That was the most intense person I've ever met to my life. <laughs> like to this day, to my like. So as long as it was below that, I'd probably okay. be fine. But that was like the peak of like. But you put that on your your neck. Yeah. No one can talk to you. <laughs> I was like, you put a Teletubby with a big old dick on your neck. That's a rough one. So here's my next question. You know the one where Calvin is pissing like on yes. a, like a car? What if it's that, but it's Liam Neeson pissing? Um, now, if he got that all over his back, I might have had to marry him right then and there because that oh! is. Okay. What if it was Calvin peeing on Liam Neeson's pants and then that's like the excuse that Liam Neeson has is that Calvin peed on him that's it why was he Calvin. Has... How, what's the liam neeson impression it was calvin calvin was the one that pissed calvin was the one pants. who did it and hobbs that naughty tiger i would be completely fine with that as long as you had the whole story underneath sure. you have to like tell, like bring me through the emotional journey <laughs> and then you can have that tattoo it's like why you got it how to contextualize it. it's like modern art you know Mm -hmm. What if it's like a writer's room, like a board in the writer's room and like it's your back and it's like act one. And then like there's like a, a blue card, and a pink card and a yellow that card. That made me think, do you think somebody has like. Yes. A pilot. The answer is like yes. The break, the, oh. uh, like the beat yes! of a show tattooed on their back. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it's like the pilot for like it's always sunny. <laughs> <laughs> tattooed that would be on their back. Well, that would also be like once, you know, white supremacists like, oh, no, they're on to us. We can't get like 88 anymore. Or we can't get like this symbol. It's like they all start getting the uh, the the beats of the it's always sunny pilot on their. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's like the that's yeah. their secret code of like. Which we can as a society admit that it's always sunny is basically alt right Seinfeld. <laughs> is that fair to say? The one where they storm the Capitol. <laughs> The, the, gang, the gang the gang storms the gang storms the capital that would be julie if it was the what? one where they storm the yes. capital that would be friends and that would be sorry the greatest day of my life watching I ross know. watching ross be like i'm trying to get up the wall and like like Help me. Wait, which one of the girls would be like, they mazed me. We were trying to start a revolution. Rachel, that, that's so that's so Rachel. That is Rachel, but Phoebe could do it too. <laughs> There's room for all yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Phoebe is basically the guy with the horns on his head. So with the Viking helmet. Oh, absolutely. And I, I, I'm not as uh, hip on Friends, mainly because uh, I'm black and watched Living Single, which was black people friends. So to, to, to contextualize my experience, I was like, which one? Yeah. Which white one? To contextualize my experience, I had a better one. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you know, uh, I grew up uh, with my aunties all being like, they just stole friends from Living Single, which is all of my aunties. Not all of my aunties. One of my aunties. Not wrong. Is it wrong, though? Are they wrong? It's a little bit of Living Single, and it's a little bit of the movie Singles, which was the big accusation that Cameron Crowe levied against uh, friends was like, I did a movie where it was people hanging out in the coffee shop, 
at a, a pe- young people hanging out in the coffee shop, and then they did a TV show about people that, hanging out in the coffee shop. That accusation has been used to treat more insomnia than any drug, by the way, I've heard. Cameron Crowe taking issue with friends conceptually has has caused comas. Yeah, I I am sleepy at the thought. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening now, Brett? Do we have people on the... Yeah, so we've line. got our our, our first uh, uh, tattoo guy coming up here who uh, wants uh, um, us to design a tattoo for him that he's actually going to get. Um, so I'll bring him into the room here in a second. His name is Steve. Uh, now we're, what we're going to do is we we are going to talk to a couple listeners of this show who said after we said if you're going to get it if you would want a double threat tattoo, reach out to us. We're going to try to guide these people. We're going to try to advise them about what to do, what not to do. So this is like we could use as much input as we can get helping these souls figure out the tattoo that we can all be comfortable with them getting. Yeah, Like you don't want to go to Keith Ranieri with it all, right? Like it was. What? <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, How well, dare you insult? He's such a good piano player. Oh, my God. I, I, a real he, smoke show. <laughs> he tickles the ivories and he tickles my ovaries. He'll come what? flying in here and do a Tai Chi all over me and I'm scared of him. He'll do he, Tai Chi. He'll do volleyball. He'll have a ponytail that is held together by sweat alone. Yeah. His sweat and John Lennon glasses. Um. Do you think there's anybody who got who watched that show and then got a Keith Ranieri tattoo? With his initials, Do you think anybody has anybody? No, no, not the brand that they forced upon people. Anybody watched like the Vow and it was like, I think I'm going to get a tattoo of Keith Ranieri. I kind of hope not, but I know that's a lie. Somebody absolutely was like nailed it. That guy with the Teletubbies tattoo might already have a Keith Ranieri standing next to Tinky Winky. Yeah, just like going down on him. <laughs> just gobbling. All right, so I'm, I'm going to bring uh, Steve on here. Uh, and uh, just a heads up, we got 20 minutes to get Steve's tattoo design. So you're on okay. the clock, 20 here minutes. We and here I comes only need Steve. 10. Here we go. Hi, Steve. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Where 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 are you, Steve? Where, where in the planet are you? I'm in the suburbs of Chicago. I'm in uh, Berwyn right now. So, so Chicago land. Yep. Uh, did I get it right? Yep. So you, Steve, what is your history with tattoos? If you don't mind us um, asking. I have about 10 of them. They're all over this arm. Um, and then I have some on my upper arm and on my legs. Uh, I don't, they're not covering my whole body, but I have quite a few. Okay. But this would, this wouldn't be your first. No, no. What's your favorite and what's your least favorite? Yeah. Oh, um, my least favorite are certainly ones I got when I was like 18, 19. It's probably, um, I got, I got Gaelic on my arm and it's just some stupid saying, uh, it says in Gaelic is sweet to drink is bitter to pay for. And I don't, it's just on the name. Okay. Um, my most favorite is probably, I'm going to have to move the camera. It's on my leg and it's a. I don't know if you can see that. What is that? I can see the edge of it. What is it? An elephant? It's an elephant doing a handstand. Is that pink elephants on parade? Yeah. It's, it's, um, it was an old saying that when you're really drunk, you have elephants dancing in your head. Pink elephants. Steve, I'm beginning to sense a theme. I like to drink. Yeah. (laughs) Now, Steve. We don't have tattoos. Anybody, Brett, outside of Brett has a, a Brett has a, uh, do you have a tattoo? What, what's a, your tattoo, a, He's Brent? got a cat. He's got a, um, what's that, uh, that, that McDonald lands character, Captain Crook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I have a big, uh, Captain Crook back tattoo. Um, yeah. uh, that you guys have, uh, I always t- tell you I'm going to show it to you and then you quickly log out of the Zoom call. Yeah. His his Captain Crook tattoo is like that Leonardo da Vinci where like the man is like standing like this, <laughs> but it's on like a, but it's on a pentagram. Combines a lot of my interests into one. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a stigmata. Wow. How did yeah. I miss he's this? Also, he's also posing like Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> it's on his back. Cause it's on his back. 
He does um some lat pulls at the beginning of every, <laughs> every yeah, like episode. Cape Fear. We- it's like Cape Fear. The first hour of every recording for Double Threat is us watching Brett do a Cape Fear style workout <laughs> for <laughs> for a full hour in his jail cell. Um, <laughs> then he's like, all right, showtime. Uh, now, S- Stephen, we don't have tattoos. You have 10 tattoos already. And we said on the show last week that if someone would consider if uh, potentially a double threat themed tattoo, they should contact us first. And you contacted We're us. We're here. We're here to yeah. talk about this. But my question to you is, do you have an idea of what it would be? Or are you just um, open to whatever? I, I'm open to see what the fans come up with, but I, I have one idea in my head. What is, um, what is it? I, I, I like the logo for your guys' podcast where it's you two back to back. Okay. So I was thinking, oh, yes. um, if you guys don't know tattoo, uh, like an Ed Hardy style kind of old sailor tattoo of Julie and Tom. And okay. it says in... Uh, like script underneath Julie and Tom, and then above, like a rocker double threat. Wow. And I would get it on the like, top of my shoulder, on the bicep. Oh, oh. that's a good, that's good uh, real estate. Yeah. That's a, that's a good summer tattoo. Let it, <laughs> let it breathe, you know, when you're, you're walking down by the lake. That's what you do, right, in Chicago? <laughs> what, yeah, the lake. Down by, by the, the lake. lake. Oh, boy, you're really going to love the lake. Oh. oh. For the summer, there's that. nothing better than a walk around the league. I get a big slice of deep dish and I go sit on the beach and eat a casserole of cheese. Exactly. And that's that's a Chicago summer and maybe Lollapalooza is playing off in the distance. Right. You hear Lollapalooza and you hear the strains of Wilco starting <laughs> one of their many hits. So, Tom and Julie, can you add any uh, little touches to this design then? I don't know. Any little This any is little you saying, how do we fit bread oh. into this? This is exactly what he was asking, Keisha. That This is what he does. I, I, he I think seems you, you hide a B in it for Brett. Somewhere in the logo, you just hide He's not going to like that. He's you not going to like that, Keisha. There's not enough for him. So there's there's the banner at the top that says Tom and Julie, the bottom that says double threat. And we're talking about like our silhouettes, um, the logo with our silhouettes back to back. Or you want to see our faces with all the like eyeballs and all the eyeballs. You want to see, see actual like portraiture or you like the idea that they're like the cutouts? Uh, probably with a little more detail. Okay. So when you say more detail, like, like bigger breasts. <laughs> Ju- Julie. No, you don't want his tattoo to tip. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's going to back people, This just in, uh, many Chicago people have fallen into the lake this summer because <laughs> they were looking at this hachi machi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yowzers. <laughs> oh, yowzers. I'm in the lake now. Hey, come on, buddy. Let me look at your tattoo a little longer. <laughs> I have a big idea, Steve. Yes. What if your whole tattoo, everything you said, but it was like pink or red, (laughs) like, Mm. like you just got like three or four colors. Like, let's play with the color palette. Like all the, like all the colors of eczema, basically. So, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, basically I want people to go, is that a tattoo or a skin condition? Either way, I need to talk to Steve. Yeah. Either way, that lady's got great hooters. Either you're going to need to get that checked out or I want to check it out. <laughs> That's what a tattoo should do, right? Yes. And what about, what would you think about this, Stephen? A teeny tiny little brat poking <laughs> out from behind one of us and, and then a little cartoon bubble says, and me, Brett. <laughs> I love that. That'd be great. Let's step that back for a sec, because that's just first. It's not, not. It's not always first thought. Best thought. Step this. that up. Step that. Step that up a little bit more. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, "Where's Brett coming from?" Like it's if he's on both of our hair up top, <laughs> as if he lives in our hair. So, do you want him to look like a like a um? What are those things on your head when your mom is like, "Oh no." My kid has. Should he be like parting your hair? Like he's like coming out of your head? Yes. But, but what are that? What is that called? It's not fleas. Children don't get fleas, Lice. do they? 
Lice. Yes, lice. Oh, my nightmare. <laughs> so yeah. Brett's, Brett's been relegated to a lice. <laughs> yeah, Julie, I don't, I don't like I the way just, this is going. <laughs> but but it would be a funny lice, like um the way that didn't like some like famous Jimmy cartoonist Cookie? animate like the, the raid commercials from the 70s. Is that like Chuck Jones or something? Funny bugs. Funny know. bugs. Steven mentioned me as a little Jiminy Cricket version of a lice. I kind of like that. Like well, a that's little... a bug. So like Julie said, a funny bug. Yeah, funny bug. And it, is, and it just says, li- a little cartoon bubble says, lice is nice. Why are we been thinking about integrating bread into this tattoo for too much time, I yeah. think. I think we get bread out of this one. Sorry, Brett. Sorry, <laughs> Brett. That's all right. You win some, you lose some. What if we're both yeah. wearing sailor hats? What if we're both wearing sailor hats? Should there be any Chicago elements in it? Any little Chicago touches? Right, like a piece of pizza. <laughs> you guys could both be eating hot dogs with that weird green relish. I don't want to. And tattoo tomatoes. Of me eating a hot dog. Please don't put us eating. Hot Please dogs don't make ta- a tattoo I, of us I'm, eating hot I'm dogs. I'm team hot dogs. Like two you big old wieners. Dog. I love the hot dog idea. <laughs> like, of course wait. you do, Brett. <laughs> Of course you Brett do. Got, Brett got kicked off this tattoo. Now he wants, now he wants us to both be eating hot dogs. It, it could be the same hot dog. It goes out either side of the tattoo and then like loops How around. Yeah, the, the dare you. Sure. So they're both How eating. Dare you? That way, it the same hot dog around your arm, right? Yeah. <laughs> Down, oh, like you mean this. like the barbed wire tattoo? Tech- like the hot dog wraps around Steve's arm? Yeah. Sort, of, sort of like a Lady in the Tramp scenario. Yeah, like you're both eating different sides of the same giant hot dog. <sighs> Don't like it. Um, I gotta, I gotta beg you, Stephen, to not get that tattoo. Hey, Steve, I don't. This, this I, yeah. tattoo, you make all the final decisions. What if we're both eating like chicken legs, like big turkey legs? Oh well, that's different than a <laughs> hot dog. Why? How? I don't want a tattoo of me eating anything. <laughs> I don't. I. I don't want. That would. What if we're smoking? Forever. What if we're smoking something? Smoking. What is just, neither of us smoke. You're just no. rails. <laughs> it's an action. Sure. Tattoo. All right. Can I just see? Could you look up, uh, Brett, just like classic tattoo styles? I want to look at like some of the. Yeah. Templates. Ed Hardy would be the most like classic tattoo artist. You mean like a, is that like a sailor, like a sailor Jerry kind of thing? Yeah, sailor Jerry. He's, he's that. Old school tattoos. I was thinking, you know, the classic mom tattoo, how it has that ribbon that says mom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The ribbon, it'll say Tom, Julie, and then another ribbon that says double threat. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Uh, that's Yeah. So, Steve, I think what we'll do is uh, uh, we can we we can throw this out to our, our listeners to maybe submit some designs based on what we've described here and see if anybody's anybody submits something that you like. And then. Uh, and then you can use that as your model uh, to take to a tattoo artist. And then we'll check back in with you because we'd love to see what this, how this turns out, what it ends up looking like. And um, also, if you're actually going to get it done, please call into the show. Tell Brett so that we can like Zoom with you while you're getting it. Yeah, done. we'd love we'd love to be with you while you're getting the tattoo. Yes. Uh, so so please. Yeah. yeah. So we'll try to get some designs for you and then we'll check back in with you down the road. And uh, you guys get the designs. Could you guys pick the one that you like? Absolutely. Of cool. course. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for for your uh, enthusiasm, and uh, we're very flattered by this. Yeah, and, of and, you, and it have a, a, it's no problem. Thank you for listening, and please have a glass of water in between every alcoholic <laughs> beverage. Thank you. All right, buddy. All right, thanks, Steve. Bye, Steve. Oh, oh boy, it is time again. Time to talk about Magic Spoon, Double Threat's favorite cereal delivery company. I love so many things about Magic Spoon. One of those things is that it just checks so many boxes for me. It's one of those things where as soon as you hear about it, you're like, yes, that is perfect. I've been waiting for something like that because breakfast is such an important meal, but it's one that it's really easy to forget about or to uh, overlook. You're getting up in the morning, you're getting ready, you got your first Zoom call or your first conference call, and suddenly it's lunchtime already and you didn't have breakfast again. So it's such an easy thing to forget. It's such an easy thing to not 
plan for. On the other hand, it's also very easy to eat a bad breakfast, eat poorly first thing in the morning, too much sugar, too many carbs, this and that. And suddenly you've had breakfast, but then you feel crappy and you're ready for a nap, you know, in an hour. So this is where Magic Spoon comes in. They deliver healthy breakfast options through their delicious cereals to your door. So it makes it super easy and super convenient, but you're also getting a really nutritious start to the day each day. Every Magic Spoon cereal has zero sugar, 11 grams of protein, and only three net grams of carbs in each serving. It tastes amazing. It's honestly too good to be true. It's also keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. Checking those boxes, cereal boxes, and the flavors. You guys know I love the Magic Spoon flavors. And now, in addition to their best-selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, and blueberry flavors, they also offer peanut butter and cinnamon. Magic Spoon just keeps getting better. And now you can also choose your very own custom variety box. So that's six flavors available. You can use four to be sent to you each month. And then month to month, you can switch up those flavors. So maybe one month, you, you know, you're really feeling the blueberry. Then you get a little overloaded with the blueberries. So you're like, hey, let me get rid of that and try the cinnamon for a while. And then you go back to the blueberry. And then cocoa becomes your favorite. But then cocoa gets a little, you know, you've had cocoa too much. So you go to the peanut butter. You can go back and forth. Each month, you can switch up the boxes. So you're always getting what you want each month. Magic Spoon, they're here for you. So now you're saying, this sounds great. Magic Spoon, I want to get it. How do I get it? Get to the promo code already. Okay, so here we are. The promo code. Go to magicspoon.com slash Tom and Julie to grab a variety pack and try Magic Spoon today. And be sure to use promo code Tom and Julie at checkout to save $5 off your order. And guess what? Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. That's magicspoon.com slash Tom and Julie and use the promo code Tom and Julie to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon. Coming on the show now, we've got Ella Sklaw, a very talented tattoo artist from Brooklyn. Uh, I believe we first found out about Ella because she did several of uh, another Ella, Ella Emhoff's tattoos. Uh, that's Kamala Harris's stepdaughter and the widely reported uh, breakout fashion star of the inauguration this past week. Uh, but Ella Sklaw is a uh, fashion icon in her own right, and you can follow her work on Instagram at Sklaw underscore. Hi, Ella. Hi, how you doing? Thank you so much for joining us. Of course. Happy to be here. I wanted to know a little bit about how you sort of got into being a tattoo artist. Were you? Did you always know that you... Um, did you always just like to draw? Did you know at one point that you love tattoos? Did you combine the two um, at some point? How did how did that how did that come about? Yeah, I actually have sort of a weird coming to becoming a tattooer story. I was a senior in college um, at the University of Wisconsin, and I was just finishing up. And I took a drawing class with a woman named Linda Berry, who's like a pretty well-known cartoonist. Of course, I, I I could not begin to say enough about Linda without be bursting into tears. Um, <sighs> but I took a class with Linda Berry, and I was writing a thesis on like in sociology, and I was preparing to go to grad school. Um, and I hadn't drawn in 18 years. I want to say my mom used to do my art projects for me in high school. <laughs> um, and yeah, I took this class and I basically started drawing and never stopped. Oh, that's awesome. For me, getting tattoos was like a really healing thing in my own like body therapy of allowing me to like feel connected to my body in a way that I never had or had been like made not to feel um, as someone who's always been fat and like proudly these days, but um, tattoos really gave that to me. And there was something at least definitely at the beginning um, profound about doing that for with other people. And it, you know, you do something 500 times and you still feel it a little bit, but uh, it's become more and more of a job. <laughs> Um, yeah. but I love it. And yeah, That's I just success, kinda, baby. I found myself in it and I got into it at the right time and I worked my tush off. Um, and I got there, but yeah, I really, everyone who asked me about how do you get into tattooing? How do you do this? I give them the answer they don't want to hear, which is you draw every day for three years and then you pick up a machine. No, there's gotta be a shortcut. You're just not telling me the shortcut, please. It's true. Look, it's just yeah. me and you tell me the shortcut. 
I would if I had it. Um, <laughs> the other shortcut is really just uh, rip your own legs up with the tattoo machine until you figure out how to do it. So did you tattoo yourself first? Yeah. So I started out um, tattooing oranges and <laughs> grapefruits. And then I started tattooing my own legs and then I slowly started tattooing people in my bedroom <laughs> um, and then I um, just kind of went up from there but it was a very very DIY way of doing it so what well, we're doing here awesome. we have a we have a, a, a thing where we reached we mentioned on our show last week that if any listener of double throat was thinking about uh, getting a double threat tattoo, that they should reach out to us first and to a couple people did reach out to us and we're trying to navigate them getting tattoos that will make everybody happy. Everybody meaning them and us. Yeah. Mom is never happy. No, only, yeah. Mom will never be happy. But, no, no, no. Um, yeah, only, I mean, only the I'm, three of us. That's important. And that is everyone. Mm hmm. And not and not Keisha or Brett because we've learned in this last example that they're actively working against us. So we're sure we're gonna- no. <laughs> Keisha wanted me to have a, be eating a hot dog and a tattoo, and that's not what I was looking for. And Brett wanted to be a little lice popping out of our hair. He wanted to be in it, and then I suggested that he be lice, that he got all offended. But then I, he liked the idea. I think he got into wrong it. Didn't make a, any a good sense. old Chicago hot dog. So so uh, I feel attacked, Tom. For God's sakes. Uh, Ella, I'm sorry about everything going on. Brett, who do we? Cool. So we got uh, Ian in the waiting room. Ian coming in here. Uh, So let me go ahead and bring in Ian. Ian, hi. How are you? How's it going? I'm good. I'm sitting here with my dog. She's surprised. Let's see the dog. Okay. Well, she. Us the dog. (gasps) Look at Keisha's face. Look at Keisha's face. I love dogs. <laughs> <sighs> now, Ian, we mentioned on the show last week about getting du- people getting double threat tattoos, and you reached out to us. Yeah. What? What's? What's on? What's your? What's on your? What's on your mind? What are you thinking? What? <laughs> I. I. This is just for tattoos. Why I reached out? What do you mean by that? Well, do you have tattoos? Why, why are you putting us on the spot what? here? What's? What's I happening? was told you would design it. Okay, well, what tattoos do you have, if any? <laughs> okay, I got... Uh, I don't know if you can really tell. That's a cat kind of looking mad right there. Okay. Um, I don't know how to show this to the camera well, but that's an elephant. Okay. Animals. Yes, you like animals. the animals. Well, just right off the top, would how would you feel about a tattoo that says double threat and it's a picture of... Jack Nicholson spilling chili on his pants uh, at <laughs> sideline of a sitting courtside at a Lakers game. Brett, would I mean, you like to show everyone that photo? I mean, I'm open to it. I need to. S- how big is it? how big is it, is this photo? I thought it would be full size, like literally. You your face now becomes Jack Nicholson's face. And <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's going for it. He's super in. He doesn't even care. That's a Julie- that's a powerful image. I think. Julie, do you think he ate chili off of his knee or only out of the Tupperware? What is like this old man? He what is it like? He ate chili off his knee. Do you think he took one scoop off his knee because there's so much there? Yeah, I do. (laughs) So, Ella, this is our friend Ian, and he seems pretty open to something. And I would love to hear from you how we can best involve you in this brainstorming process. Um. I am about to tell you something, which is that I actually have a client walking in the door. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I told you. No, I you got to go. Have, you got to go make some money. Make some money. I'm so sorry. No, no, no don't worry. Have- we'll, we'll come. We'll come back to you and we'll hopefully have a new client for you. And before you go, I have to tell you, I'm a huge fan of Ella Emhoff's tattoos. Thank you so much. And I know that that's you, right? Yeah. Not all of them, but a couple okay. of them. Yeah. But you guys are my two favorite Ella's. Thank you. My dad now refers to her as Ella number two, but I'm probably actually Ella number two. Well, thank you for, thanks for, thanks for everything. Great meeting you, Ella. All right, y'all. Bye. All right. All righty. And now let's get really stupid here because we got to come up with something stupid. I'm thinking 
Well, what like what what what's the style you might think off the top of your head? And is there any is there any just vague parameters that w- that you've been contemplating? Yeah, um, I don't know because like this le- my left arm has been like basically all of my tattoos. So if it could be somewhere other than that, it sounds oh, good. Oh, we're gonna really start the other. Ar- so we're we're getting virgin skin on the other limb, which is <laughs> too creepy, so like, like army yeah. hammer thing that I just said. Uh. <laughs> Whoa. What's like an element of double threat that you like? What if you didn't even know what it was and you just saw, heard <laughs> there was a, t- somebody just wanted into- tattoos? It was on, yeah, Brett said they put something on threat? Craigslist. It's like, I want to okay. call a number? When I My first, epi- first ever episode of Double Threat was the Thanksgiving McDonald's Spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Threats and uh, I was a, yeah, Threats Giving, duh, yeah. I'm going to get my notepad out. Like this. Grimace? Just brainstorming here on my sketch. I like I like a what? grimace. I like the idea of like a grimace tattoo, like just like just a blob, just like on like. What about the I'm? Two of us are grimaces. Yeah. What about me and Julia Ronald McDonald's and Bratz grimace? Oh, that's it. <laughs> I think that's an excellent idea. I think. Yeah, I like I like I like the idea. Okay, for me, double threat. I, for some reason, I like a picture like two like crossed things for some reason when almost i think like a, like a crest threat. like a like a family crest yeah, yeah like a coat of arms on okay. the, yeah. By the sure. way, this is just a pitch this is me and tom as grimaces i okay. love that i like, I like that. that i mean you know who i want to be you know which character i want to be so i, I uh... captain crook <laughs> how do you draw captain crook well, he's just a classic pirate i know i <laughs> tom are you listening i also want to say as a sidebar on double thread Sorry, sorry, my brother's. <laughs> I'm on Brother, double your, threat your, your right now. Your dog's like, oh, this fucking asshole again. Yeah. What were you gonna say, Tom? I was gonna say that uh, Brett Brett has had his share of artwork thrown his way over the past week. People depicting him doing glazes and rubs uh, oh, to yeah. fish. Because last week Brett mentioned that he enjoyed, uh, like he's like, look out for me in the kitchen if I get a piece of fish and some glazes and rubs, which made me throw up. I literally, I was like you uh, with the soup, yeah. Keisha. I th- like that yeah. was my tomato soup thing when Brett bragged about his glazes and rubs for fresh fish. Rubs. Well, you're gonna throw up again. Look, you're all. <laughs> look at this. So people. The artwork oh, people good- did. There's Brett as Peter Frampton holding a giant fish, and it says Brayette comes alive. All right, what other? There, that's, that's actually ter- uh, that's, that's terrifying. So eerie, yeah. It's very when eerie. I saw that, <laughs> I forgot that he was supposed to be a sorcerer, and I thought that was like the dunce cap that like Kate Bush wears in that video. He, he, you know, he looks like a Zippy the Pinhead. Also, I was thinking in terms of something cross. What if it's like microphones? What about that? Oh, that's good. Okay. Right? Yeah. That's, that says, yeah, that says podcast tattoo for sure. What if Brett is just a fish, like represent- representatively? Like he's a mm-hmm. fish, right? So we don't need to worry <laughs> about like, oh, Brett's sticking up. You know what I mean? Like, Is he glazing himself? The- yeah. Ugh. Fish glaze? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to be upset for the rest of my life, but I think you should put oh, Welcome to the it. club. <laughs> I want bread on a platter covered in glaze, but him. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. So you want you uh. want a you want like a like a like a like a whole fish served, but it's got Brett's face on it. Yes, and like just covered in glaze. What if it was just Brett's head, but like open, like a fish head is, like like sort of what, and like a fish face. I'm sorry. No, what are you talking good. about? I just want you to think about ten years from now. Just think okay. about 10 years from now and you yeah. look down and you see Brett. <laughs> you look and you see on your arm, the producer of double threat done as a fish on a tray. Covered in glaze. Covered in glaze. Covered in gla- Grandpa, what is this? Well, there was a podcast. Well, he's like, make yeah. yourself comfortable. First 30 years ago. Yeah. Take a funny, seat. Funny story. Um, All of a sudden, the kids outside, like in traffic, playing in traffic. Yeah, the kids are just like, like I'll take oh, my no. chances. Grandpa's telling the story about the glazed fish man again on his arm. So, Ian, because you have lots of animals on one arm, what if it's 
Tom and me as like cats or something okay. or like dogs or like, what if yeah. like, it's like Julie, the cat, Tom, the dog. I think that's a good idea. I think that, I think that fits more thematically. And Brett's a flea. Not a lice, but back to flea. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, but again, a classy flea, a kind of Jiminy Cricket style flea. Sure. A like of, a Mr. A Peanut bit. style. Like yeah. if Mr. Peanut was a yeah. flea. <laughs> What what if what if you what if you see Brett's face in the anus of one of the dogs? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. <sighs> I mean, it could be to to it could be like the end of uh of Merry Melodies. Like I'm kind of cut, you know, like a Porky Pig coming out of uh, the inside yeah. of a carrot. Brett's all, folks. Yeah. What if there's like a symbol besides like the crossing microphones? What else do you like about the show, Ian? Yeah, what if it's like two cross french fries with microphone french fries, at the top? Right? So this is a, like, let's say like this is in the center. These are fries, right? Yeah, very good. And then like we have cross microphones. I'm telling you, Julia, I'm, and I'm not joking. What? You're an amazing artist and you know that. Thank you. Thank you. I, think it's, I think it's time for you to, to lean back into doing some art. I have been doing more art around the house than... I think it's time for this to be public. Okay, so what am I doing? There's fries and microphones. And then what are the other elements? We want like a fish. We want a fish on one side, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like we could have Woody Allen and Alec Baldwin. Uh, I don't, uh, I'd rather not have just say, those just two say people. Yes and picture, Ian, Ian. Ian. picture Ian at the airport. They're not letting uh. him on the plane for some reason. Like, they won't tell him why they won't let him on the flight. It's because he has a, they spotted his weird Woody Allen McDonald's tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know I'm just an advisor in this process, but could those be chili fries? Just something reminiscent of. Yeah, today. yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Oh, Jack, Nich- you work Jack Nicholson back into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's love great. It. So maybe instead of uh, Alec Baldwin and Woody Allen, because I think that was a veto, it, it could be Jack Nicholson sort of dipping a spoon into the chili that's dripping down the fries. That's, ooh, okay. Do we want something at the bottom, like a little banner that says double thread or something with like text? Sometimes I like to Im- let the image speak for itself, but you know. We could just yeah, just add a little banner at the bottom. What if the mm-hmm. bat? What if the banner says "Let the image speak for itself"? Perfect, but in Latin. In Latin. <laughs> in Latin. <laughs> yeah. Everybody will get that. Well, your your Shakespeare quoting husband probably speaks Latin. Yeah. I think we're I think we're onto something with the double threat crest. And what we can do, Ian, is uh, we'll, we'll we'll throw this over. Julie's given us a good a great sketch here to start with, and we can throw. I'll put, I'll put arrows on things. So we'll throw uh, throw this out to our uh, a bunch of artists who listen to this show, and they can come up with a kind of uh, a couple of versions of this for you. And then what we'd love for you to do is. Um, you know, pick the one that you like the best and then keep keep us in the loop and uh, not get that one. <laughs> get the one you like the least. And then uh, keep, keep us in the loop. And we would love to uh, be be in the room when you get this tattoo, maybe zoom with you again when when this happens. Uh, but okay. we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll make sure we get some we get some uh, some of our yeah artist listeners on this to get you some uh, some nice design options for the for the double thread crest. Um, and uh, yeah. And we, we, cool. we thank you very much for uh, for being thank on you. the show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. It was so much fun. Thank you, Ian. Keisha, did you have fun? I had a good time. I, I got to see <laughs> Jack Nicholson just make a mess. Yeah. I He's a messy baby. A messy, messy baby. I, I'm excited to hear how these tattoos go. Fingers crossed, no scarring. Keisha, do you have anything to to plug or to direct people towards or to tell people to do or not to do? Oh, well, you can follow me on online, on Twitter, Instagram or whatever. Uh, you can also, if you really just want to hear me over share with my husband, Google Keisha and Andrew. All right, my friend. But uh, thank you for having me. Yes, Come back anytime. Yes, this was, I, I, I love you, Keisha. You're the best. I love you too. And Tom, I, I'm getting to know you. So, uh, yes, that's I'm, still good. So I'm good, getting though. to know myself also, you know, it's a journey, uh, it is. not a destination. So, uh, 
follow your tracks in the sand. Uh, oh, thank God. you again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye. 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 Um, okay, guys, we've got uh, one final segment here for you on the show, which is we've got three listeners, uh, Mary, Brennan, and Kaylee, who uh, all reached out to us with regrettable tattoos, tattoos that they have currently, but they kind of regret. Um, and they've got some interesting stories uh, behind how, how they got these tattoos. Uh, but they're hoping that you guys can help them fix these regrettable tattoos. Uh, I don't know if that's by adding on a, an, an, a, a complimentary tattoo or an additional element to it or disguising it in some way. Uh, okay. But they're going to tell us about their regrettable tattoos and you're going to help fix them. Uh, so here comes Mary, Brennan, and Kaylee. Very exciting. Hey! Hi, everyone. Uh, so so you guys are here to chat with us about tattoos that you've regretted. Um, Mary, do you want to do you want to start first? And maybe we could pitch you some ideas on how to cover them. That would be wonderful. Um, so my mother decided she wanted to get a tattoo with me. And she was very flustered and we were very nervous and we left the house to drive to the place, which was like 45 minutes away. And she ended up getting the Toulouse-Lautrec um, cat, the little black cat tattooed on her ankle. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. And I was just, I wanted, I'm a big dork, so I wanted to get something Star Wars and I had the little <laughs> alliance uh, symbol but in the midst of the f- fluster, bleh, we just left the house, didn't have anything. I didn't realize it till we were halfway there. And so we got there and I was like, well, I want to get something. So I pulled out my Star Wars fan club card and it just had a stupid Star Wars logo. And I said, OK, just put that on my back. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh God, that looks so bad. So mm. what we're looking, Tom, do you want to describe what we're looking at right now? It says Star Wars. It's in the Star Wars logo mm-hmm. and it's a little faded because when did you get this, Mary? Uh, Like 99, nine, yeah, 98, 99. So what would you like to, to do? To have, first of all, how does the tattoo, what is your current feeling about it? Mary? It's, I, I mean, I can't see it. I never see it. I didn't even realize it looked that bad. I got to say, I kind of love it. Now that I'm looking mm-hmm. at it again, I think it's kind of yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I want to like add to it somehow. But so, okay. so you want it to be like Star Wars is a movie that like put like, we're just like, I like the movie on top of it. And then just says Star Wars. That works. <laughs> that would work. Yeah. That would be an improvement. <laughs> Or what? Okay, what about this? this? Is kind of meta. What if it says one time I got a tattoo that said, and there's the Star Wars. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I like that, Tom. Bob. Yeah, I like some sort of context, some like out, some extended framing of it. Then I think could be good because then you don't alter the actual tattoo itself. You add to it. What if it's the brim of a hat? <laughs> If it's like, if like this says Star Wars, but then it's like a hat and like it's on top of like Baby Yoda, but like he's like a sexy lady. <laughs> what if it said, um, yeah, I like that. I like the idea of like, oh, I got this. I got this. And then Star Wars. And then tattoo. tattoo in 1999 because my mom wanted to get tattoos. Or wanted to get and then the picture of the cat. Yeah. <laughs> So, there you go. So it's like a there you go. what is yeah. that called? Like a rebus? Like something where you like have pictures in this, like you learn in highlights magazine how to read. I dig it. I dig it. Or what if it says You ever go to the dentist? You ever go to the dentist, Julie? You ever go to the dentist and the highlights you're in it? They're like, all right, you're up next. You're like, not now. <laughs> These timber toes are just getting started. Give me five. <laughs> Not my. If you don't want me in that room faster, you shouldn't have highlights <laughs> in the lobby. 
Did you ever bring it to the chair because you wouldn't leave the waiting room without crying? And they're like, they let yeah. you bring it to the chair. You're trying to read highlights <laughs> with one of those suckers in your mouth. And then you put the magazine between you and the sucker and they're like, yeah. we can't do our work. And you're like, shut up. Yeah. I have one more pitch for Mary. Just add exclamation points at the end. Oh, yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. Just like, like five that. or six exclamation points. I like that. Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all you need, baby. I think that might be the simplest and most fun yeah. Version of it without making it like too meta. Yeah. Brennan, tell us a story. Okay. Uh, my terrible tattoo uh, actually came as a result of a night of drinking with a friend. What? Uh, no. <laughs> I know. Stranger things will happen. Anyway, uh, <laughs> like he'd come home from the military and I'd just gotten out as well and he was visiting me. And we were having kind of a late night drunken conversation, just sad military things. And to change the subject, he uh, shows me this ridiculous tattoo that he has on his forearm. And it's a picture of an ice cream cone throwing up a rainbow. And so I'm asking him, why did you get this tattoo? And it turns out he gets this tattoo because he lost the tattoo game. So I asked what's the tattoo game and it's essentially tattoo roulette. You go to a tattoo shop with a person they pick what you get, you pick what they get, and you get what you get. You don't get to see it until it's done. So because, you know, we've been drinking all afternoon, I, I, I know this is a bad idea, but I, what comes out of my mouth is, let's do it tomorrow. So before he leaves town, he's like, hey, let's go out and go get a drink. So him, uh, my ex-wife, and her friend, and I, we all pile into a car. We're going downtown. We're going to go to a bar. Well, we pass by the bar and I say, hey, guys, you missed it. They all start laughing and say, no, we didn't. We're going to the tattoo shop. Oh, they had all yeah. kind of coordinated this effort. X -wife is go to the, the, the word X is an important one in this sentence, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so, so you find yourself you know, at the tattoo parlor now. And you yeah. may find yourself. <laughs> Yeah, so we're at the tattoo parlor, and we walk up to the counter and kind of explain the situation. Nice. And the people in the tattoo shop laugh and tell us it's a terrible idea. <laughs> and we go through with it. We fill out the paperwork, and I pick out his design. He picks out mine, and he goes first. Like, I, I picked out something that was pretty small and would be easy to hide and wouldn't be that big of a deal. It was just, I don't even remember what it was. So. What was it? Who cares? Who cares? That's yeah, his problem. Really. What did he pick yeah. out for you? Um, he picked out for me a parrot sitting on a tree branch holding a margarita glass wearing sunglasses. Full color. <laughs> I, I look, I'm gonna just say this. And where where is that <laughs> where, that where is that tattoo, Brennan? It is on my right shoulder. As is. I'm sorry. <laughs> No that notes. Is, no, no notes, notes that, Brennan. That no is, notes. I like that tattoo. That's awesome. That guy I did don't you know. a favor. First, no. That's what's your problem with it? Yeah. It's great. You're you won the game. You did not lose it. That tattoo is awesome. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I love that tattoo. It's amazing. Well, it's great. There's so many things that are off about it. Like he's not. Those aren't really sunglasses. They're kind of like cat's eye, like. Secret, like like a woman on the far side would wear those as glasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or the old kind lady in the greeting class. cards. Those are the yes! ones that the old that old bat in the greeting cards wears. Well, here, here's my problem with it. This, this is my problem with it, though. Okay, like a year later, he comes back to visit me, and we're hanging out and we're drinking beer again, and the the subject of the tattoo comes up, and I just ask him, you know, so why did you pick that? Why why was that the thing? Over the years, we've kind of had this, you know, teasing frenemy relationship. And he uh, would always joke about how one day he's going to try to be my stepdad. He's going to try to hook up with my mom. Just as, you know, gross guy stuff. And the reason he picked that tattoo is because 
he thought my mom would like it and she does I don't know how to I, Tom I feel like we should step back from that part of the story. I gotta say we 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 brought you here to talk about tattoos it's a, it's a different, not, it's a different not to navigate on. this soap opera that you're laying out that your, your evil friend is, is yeah, trying to no, become your stepdad this. this is like a this is like the worst soap opera what a turn i agree that that's the problem <laughs> this is what i'll say you know what you say to the guy what's that you say i'm just you say all the mean things you want to say but in the scheme of things i'm a parrot drinking a margarita Cool. Wearing sunglasses, it it's not doesn't bug me. You say you go for it. I approach life like I'm the parrot with the margarita with the sunglasses, and that means you win. Could we add that as a speech bubble then to the tattoo? Is that the addition? I would not change one I don't change line anything about in it. this tattoo. If anything, I would, I would like add arrows I around would, it in a circle want, pointing actually, to it. I think I want this tattoo. <laughs> I actually think I want that tattoo. Yeah, That's I might it. get it. It's cute. It's cute yeah, and it's funny and it's playful. It's great. And, but it's, it, it's, it's attitudinally yeah. perfect. Yeah. All right. Who's next? Kaylee. Hold on a second. I'm just finishing an article. Ah! Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hold on. You actually, Kaylee pulled up an issue of highlights. What's on the cover this month, Kaylee? Um, Mitch McConnell. It's a, a, a mama llama and a baby llama. So cute as hell. Can I ask why you have an issue of highlights? Do you? Do you have children? Uh, it's, or? it's for my daughter. Yeah, I have a three-year-old. <laughs> Look, if you were reading highlights, I'm one step away from subscribing to highlights for myself at this it's point. It's pretty fun. Yeah, it's it's not bad. It's There's a some wonderful magazine. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So tell us, Kaylee, about your tattoo adventure. Okay. Um, so I'm from Michigan, but uh, I haven't lived there since 2008. So I've been in DC for since then. And um, in like 2012, I was visiting my family. We we're on vacation. And I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a Michigan outline tattoo since I'm here yes. and I'm from here. Um, so I went and I got it. And um, since then, it's been... Um, I don't really feel the same sort of connection because I don't live there anymore. And also people are always really confused <laughs> by this tattoo um, because they don't know what the UP is. So they're like, why? What's that extra part? And I'm like, that's part of the state. Mm -hmm. Or they think I'm doing the UP a favor by including it. Like, oh my God, that's so nice that the UP is there. I'm like, yeah, well, it's part of the state. So um, okay. I, I have a bunch of other tattoos that make this one look extra amateur. So. And UP is Upper Peninsula? Yeah, yeah, the Upper yeah. Peninsula. Okay. Look, you could always you turn that. Because I was too embarrassed to ask. You could always turn that <laughs> lower half into one of Bernie's mittens. <gasps> oh, wow. <laughs> yes, just do another. Yes, turn it one. And then the other one is another mitten. Wow. You could turn them into Bernie's mittens. Yeah. Have two mittens, and then the top is just the UP. Yeah. yeah. A real conversation starter. Or Ender. Yeah. Or Ender, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's preferred, I think. I I, I do Done. have other tattoos that you like. Oh, yeah. I like all my other tattoos. Okay. This is just the one that isn't working for you. Yeah, it just, I, like I said, I don't really, you know, I'm not, I haven't lived there in so long. And I just, but I also have been a little um, hesitant to cover it up because sure. you know, am I losing my midwest oh your 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 identity yeah right well are you <laughs> um maybe a little mm -hmm. <laughs> you could also just put a little michigan on part of it too and if people you put just like right michigan inside there and then I'm say then parts. people know it's michigan 
Yeah, but I think if it said it on the UP and in the men, just Michigan, both. So, okay, here's a here's another pitch. You turn the top into a, a, a jumping bunny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. It's almost, you know, and he's that's like, like a, 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 yeah. And that's like a little dog jumping up, trying to chomp the jumping bunny. Or a Yeah, shark. exactly. Or on the shark. bottom or on the top? The bottom. A shark on the bottom. Where would the sharks? The I mouth is like the, the look. It's like a it's like a shark or a dog in in profile, and that and the yeah, indentation like is the it mouth. It would be a dog, right? Like just give the dog an ear. Yeah. And the bunny is jumping over the dog. It just missed mm-hmm. the dog. The dog's yeah. frustrated because the bunny just jumped over his head, and he's like, "Oh God, damn it!" Mm-hmm. Yeah. These are some great ideas. I love it. Or you just keep going. You get this is the rest of America. You just go (laughs) all the way with it. Well, I think you're in great shape. This is the the, none of these three tattoos were nearly what they could have been. I think all three of you are perfectly. You have awesome tattoos. And yes, I've seen way worse. Absolutely. No, these are great tattoos. Also, if you want, just put double threat next to any of them and Brett will pay for it. <laughs> yeah, or put double threat approved next to it and I'll, uh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. a little seal of approval. Well, that was fun. That was a great episode. A lot of tattoo talk and uh And I'm gonna of, go get some body modifications now. You could go get some ink. Well, I think I'm gonna get those little horns underneath my skin. Sure. Um I think that's under a good my idea. under my uh my skull cap, my mm-hmm. Jewish skull cap. I'm just gonna never mind. Mm-hmm. Edit that out. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting no, a Josh Hawley. Ta- I'm getting a Josh Hawley tattoo uh, next week. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm pretty pumped. Uh, I think Ted Cruz's tweets. I'm going to get all of. Gonna, what, what are you getting? Lauren Bobert. Uh, Lauren Bobert. Mm, yes. Lauren Bobert. Just Lauren Bobert yes. setting, setting off a metal detector tattoo. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is a great episode, and thanks everybody who was a part of it. And thank you to Keisha Zoller, who you can follow on Twitter at Keisha Z and at Keisha Zoller on Instagram. And thank you and all so much for listening. Yeah, and I'll, I'll put a link to Keisha's socials in the uh, show notes. So just click on that, give her a follow. She's a great follow. I uh, also have links in there to check out our merch store. By the time this episode comes out, we should have a bunch of new designs up on the merch store um, for you to check out. Um, and also remember to follow Double Threat Pod at Double Threat Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we put up a lot of the stuff that we discuss on the show there. So you get some visuals and some videos for all of that. Uh, so it's a great way to follow along while you're watching the or listening to the show. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thanks, everybody. And we got a good one coming up for you next week and some big uh, uh, challenges that we're going to turn over to you, the audience. And we are excited for the next episode and come back next week. Bye. Bye. Forever Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram at Forever Dog Team and liking our page on Facebook. Each 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 on Facebook.